Welcome back to Force Education. This is Zed. Today, we're going to be talking about the ticker PROG. In this video, we're going to dive a little bit on who they are, technical analysis, and what we anticipate in the next few days. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this one. So, Progenty. For this one, we do cover first a bit of SEC filings to understand who they are. So, first off, one of the latest news that we do have about this is a departure of some of the directors and basically a shuffling in between for some of them. Especially the CEO himself, um, Mr. Harry Stiley or Dr. Harry Stiley, PhD. Um, the CEO previously resigned and effectively there is a substitution or a replacement for them and that is something that isn't out of kind of a proceed of uh, someone getting fired or anything that they kind of show but rather than just uh, being re resigning on uh, quote-unquote good terms now on the other part that we get progenty entered into a security purchase program or agreement with certain institution with accelerated or accredited investors relating towards offering sales so basically this refers back to an offering sale uh, where the net proceeds were approximately 20 million dollars before placement agreement uh, agent fees and estimated offering expenses and the offering here closed on October 6th. Now this is a more of an updated one. And you're able to see this is prospect uh, updated back on, I believe, from what I've seen around October 6th as well. And it does talk about the price point being 150 per share to a total of 20 million shares. Now currently the stock price is around 135 and there's a reason why it kind of almost dipped right after uh, it jumped a little because on October 6th or October 5th you're able to see that it got really close towards the $2, sorry that was October 3rd, October 1st and October 4th and then they hit the offering and that brought the stock price down. So they really went with a classic offering that they do. Now. For this company, I forgot to mention who they are. So they're a biotechnological company innovating in the fields of uh, gastrointestinal health and oral biotherapeutics. Progenty applies a multiple omics approach, uh, combining genomics, uh, epigenomics, proteinomics, and metabolomics to its molecular testing products and to the developments of a suite of investigational ingestible devices designed to provide precise diagnostic sampling and drug delivery solutions. Now in terms of the different products, we have the three ones. So this one here is the oral one, so the oral delivery of large molecules. And this one here you're able to see they have the key data and clinical development roadmap and they're anticipating they're already initiated in 2021 anticipating the next milestone to be in 2022 initiation of its first clinical study evaluating uh, pharmacokinetics of a therapeutic delivered with obds and gi targeted therapeutics this one is for gastrointestinal health and you're able to see as well another milestone for quarter 4 2021 where the top line results from a clinical pharma um, or pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic study of adalimumab in ulcerative colitis patients would be in quarter 4 2021 and in 2022 initiating the first clinical study to evaluate it uh, or evaluate therapeutics delivered with this technology with DDS. Now another one which is the PILDX progenity ingestible lab. Uh, this is also a part of that study in a, a side with GI targeted therapeutics. Now another one that we have and this one is relating towards Precolodia and this one here still has also a milestone so they already had a feasibility and optimization study and verification study. Currently they're with the, going through clinical validation in the PRO 104 study which already had up to 1,300 patients, 21 geographically diverse U.S. sites, and established rollout window and final test performance. And between 2021 and 2022, they're going to have a robust clinical development to develop health economics data, target publication of key data, and initiate trials of established clinical utilities and expand intended use of population. Now, before moving on towards other information, if you would like to see more contents like this, make sure to click the subscribe button on the bottom right corner and leave notifications on for this channel. Also, don't forget to drop a like to this video. And if you would like to join the conversation, we have a chat room down in the description below. It doesn't serve anything than a chat room in there. So in terms of institutional buyers, we're able to see that there is some activities 
of institutional buyers. Bank of America liquidated 88% of their position on the 13th of September. Now, there's nothing that we see so far in October. Paramedic Portfolio Association has around 17,000 shares. And the iShares Morningstar Small Cap Eva Value ETF added around 3,000 shares. Nothing really massively significant. Morgan Stanley has increased their position by 108% to a total of 50,728 shares on the 23rd of August. Now, other than that, we're able to see that the insiders have around 61.72% of the entire uh, ownership of the shares. But in terms of insiders in general, we don't see much activity in the last 90 days at all, as you get to see here. Now, in terms of the short shares, currently there's around 55,000 short shares availability at a high short borrow fee rate of 17.31, which is still very high compared to other stocks. And currently it's uh, the percentage between short volume and total volume is ranging between 40 and 60%. Key statistics shows that the price over sales is around 4.76. Now the 4.76 is very close towards what we're seeing in the market average in general so it's not undervalued or overvalued much and in terms of their total assets we're able to see that this company quarter per quarter has somewhat maintained a total current assets between 93, 93 million my bad and 160 million in terms of the total assets not the current total assets there has been a bit of a decrease because if we were to look at quarter 2 2020 versus quarter 2 2021 they went from 186 million to 120 million that is understandable when you're going on to pharma because they do burn quite a lot of money uh, with their trials and you're able to see their total debt increase from 73 million to around 159 million only within a year in terms of their income, they are inc operating income negative, so operating loss. And currently between, let's say, uh, do quarter two 2021 versus quarter 20, uh, two 2020, they are somewhat within the range of the operating loss of around, I would say, 40, around 40 plus or minus 5 million losses per quarter. In terms of their net income, though, it's incredibly higher than what we've seen in the last quarter so 70 almost 9 million loss compared to 32 in the last quarter and year over year it's around 53 million loss so this gives you an idea about their company itself and how there's still a roadway to go and let's move on towards technical analysis now now from a technical analysis perspective we start seeing some things that are very interesting so first off yes the momentum was really building up towards october 5th to october 4th and then they hit it with that offering and the things just plummeted down uh, to currently 135. The offering was at 150, so you might anticipate for it to bounce back at least to 150. In terms of the movement itself, it's around 2768 on this indicator. Usually this is just a movement, but this is just showing you basically momentum with time and momentum is slowing down as time increases. And in terms of the willing percent R, which is very similar to the relative strength index, it has been very sloppy, neither overbought or oversold since the 4th of October. And NICD, we're seeing a retraction here as it attempts to go towards the negative side sometime next week, although it's unlikely that it would succeed in this. Momentum, you're able to see this is on a positive note. That is a good thing with momentum. But in terms of stochastic fast and stochastic slow, you're able to see the stochastic fast is kind of horizontal, almost dipping down, suggesting be careful. You might see a dip, but the stochastic slow is kind of moving upwards and that in its own is a bullish thing. Now, on the current uh, Bollinger Bands, we're able to see this one is expected to trade between 166 and, one, and 62 cents. So currently it's within that range, the Bollinger Bands and the Moving Average Bands are somewhat stable, almost looking upwards, um, and that is a good thing, but volumes have really decreased and you see some selling activity by the unbalanced volume. Now in terms of Fibonacci retracements, currently there is a significant resistance at 143 and 192 and 230, and the support on here is around 66 cents. But if we were to go ahead with some price line action, we're able to see that there's a critical, critical support that we don't want to break at the around 126 level. And then below there, 119, and then down to 109, and then downwards to 98 cents and 89 cents, going downwards to around 74 cents. Resistances. 
you're able to see 140 is a resistance 151 and then upwards to 173 189 and up to 220 so it comes to the question to add what do you think is going to happen here i think we're going to be seeing an accumulation uh somewhere between around the 151 and the 128 or even the 121 but if we do break the 121 this is in trouble and i do see it we do see a possibility of it reaching 150. now the biggest thing you got to understand about this one is their pharma and their pre pre-product pharmas which means they're going to burn through a lot of cash and there's a lot of opportunity for them to lose a lot of money as you get to see the profit the, the stock price itself has been decreasing for a while but if you want to make kind of a quick buck you might be able to from 135 to 150 and it might spring a little bit higher if they push some news afterwards but really it all pertains about what news they push and the last time they released some good news they hit it with offering so you got to be very careful with that what do you think about the sticker make sure to mention down in the comments below share subscribe and like and have a wonderful day now if you're still here on this video make sure to drop down below and join our discord we have a lot of different things going on including for instance members that gives picks for free it's not pump and dumps we just things we think about swings etc we also have really exciting bots uh you can actually use those ones for instance we're just testing out this bot for instance that gives you fibonacci resistance points activities etc and we have a bunch of free things totally free we run on tips here and you can ask me questions suggest stocks etc it's a really nice community that has been growing up uh, very fast at a very good rate and it's totally free if you would like to join that one feel free to do so in the description below and have a wonderful day